Hello everyone, welcome back to another tactics video here on the channel. My name is Ash and you'll know me as Brahma18. This is the home of Karimo Tactics for FIFA on YouTube. No one does it better than us today. I am so, so excited for this. We have Jose Mourinho's Porto team, in particular the team that won the Champions League in 03 04. For any of you new to the channel, welcome along. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload. This is the series where I show you how to recreate real tactics in game. Not a promise that you'll win every game, but it is a promise that the tactic will be recreated as accurately and as effectively as I can possibly make it within the constraints of the game. Today, I'm excited for this, not only because it is a Jose Mourinho tactic and he's one of my guys, but also because this is the first tactic of a Portuguese team that we have covered on the channel, ever. Which is pretty crazy to me. We know, we've been doing this since, what, FIFA 20, two and a half years now, and I'm yet to cover a Portuguese team until now. That's, that's shocking, that's really bad. Well, we're showing Portugal some love this week. We've got this one, and in a couple of days' time, and it will probably be out by the time most of you are watching this, we've also got Ruben Amarim's Sporting Lisbon tactics coming for you as well. So two to look out for, really excited to get into it. Just a couple of quick notes before we do. Go and check out my Patreon if you haven't done so already. The link is down below. I know I mention it every vi every video, but honestly, lots of great perks on there. My FIFA 22 custom tactics package with uh, deep dives and rankings and ratings of every tactic. Exclusive tactics videos like Unai Emery's Villarreal, Sean Dyche's Burnley that we don't do on YouTube. They're Patreon exclusive only. Access to my player scouting board with... Loads of scout reports on a range of different players based on hundreds of hours of my own analysis. So many perks, I cannot list them all. So make sure to go and check that out. And if you can, thank you to everyone who uh, has supported me so far. Right then, enough of the rambling. Really excited to get into this. What do we have with the formation? Well, people have often seen it as a 4 3 1 2. I see it as more of a narrow diamond. I think that middle central midfielder was more of a defensive midfielder and played like one as well. So really what we've gone for is basically the 4-4-2 the with the narrow midfield diamond. And that's really what it played as. In terms of position changes, you won't need to make any. It is the flat one. Um, so you just go with that. Even the fullbacks, which I hesitated with this, but trying to recreate the tactic accurately, we have to stick them at fullback. I would have preferred to push them up to wingback if I could have, but we have stuck it out with that. Also bear, bear in mind... In terms of the team selection, I know some people might look at this, especially Porto fans, like, why are some players playing here? Like, why have we got Galeno at front and everything? I'm really trying to just get the players closest to their respective positions as possible. For example, Porto often had one target man and one more kind of mobile striker um, in that season, and that's what we're really trying to recreate. And Porto don't really have that mobile kind of pacey forward, so um, I just stuck Galeno there to try and recreate that as, as best as I could, really. So... Please just uh, bearing that in mind. So what do we have tactically then? Well, defensively, first off, we actually have pressure on heavy touch. No, Mourinho's teams don't always and didn't always drop back all the time and just let the opposition play. Sometimes they'd be aggressive. They'd try and get in your face. Naturally, there would be an element of them regressing and sort of retreating and, and regaining their defensive shape. And that is what you get on pressure on heavy touch because... You know, it doesn't press all the time. It's really more on when the opposition are playing themselves into trouble or when you notice that there is an opportunity for you to press, that's when you can instigate it. You can also do left and then down on the D-pad. and That will help you instigate a press for a few seconds as well to support that. But other than that, they then regain their shape and, and bed back into that real defensive system. The width is down to 10, very compact. A Mourinho principle. Again, I should emphasise that these tactics aren't the way they employed every game because the Mourinho team is very adaptable and they would often do that and we will show how they change slightly in a defensive game plan as well um, but it's really just the general principles and obviously one of those principles is very compact very narrow stop the opposition playing through your lines instead force them to try and go around beat your center backs in the air you know very very tough to do that the depth is down to 40 giving you a mid block no not a low block as some would uh, sort of misunderstand that we have a fairly low mid block. Instead, it helps you to give a bit of compliment to that press when they will occasionally instigate it, but it also means it was going to be less space in behind for the opposition to start playing balls 
and you know basically leave your defensive line vulnerable offensively what do we have well with the build up play we have fast build up and then we can couple that with chance creation which is on forward runs giving you a very deadly counter attacking team something that they are well known for and regarded for throughout the years regardless of the club he has been at and this is the best way to, to get that most deadly and efficient counter attack. With fast build up, you will notice a little bit of a gap in between maybe the defence and, and some of the midfielders. Um, that is an issue with the game and something that we, we can't control much. I do try and um, sort of deal with it with the player instructions, which we'll come on to a bit later. Um, but that is something, again, worth bearing in mind. Forward runs, naturally, just trying to get players um, you know, mobile and moving as much as we possibly can. The width is up to 70 and that's going to give you a wide shape and this is very important for the gameplay, not so much in real life because of the facts with that narrow diamond and the fact that you haven't got wing backs, it's going to be very, very tricky to try and create that width and you need to create that width. So as a result, we stretched the shape out a little bit. We didn't go all the way to 100 though because remember that defensively the width is 10. So you don't want the, the shape to be too wide and then having to retreat and leave gaps in the middle, making you exposed on a counter-attacking situation and in, the, in that sort of attacking transition for the opposition. Players in the box is on six, and that's going to give you three players in the box. It would be the two strikers and the attack midfielder as well. Occasionally, a central midfielder might come up, but not enough for me to justify changing that to more. Ultimately, they're pragmatic and... You know, it, it is say an element of safety first. Finally, with the corners on free kicks, they're both up to four, giving you more players in the box. But not too much that you're, you're over committing. Moving on to the player instructions then. Starting off with the keeper and working our way through. The keeper is on comes to crosses. Again, very aggressive. That Mourinho style. He likes his players to impose themselves. But saving outside the box is unbalanced. Never really looked for a sweeper keeper. And, and don't really need to as much when you have a team that is playing you know, a lower mid block. Or if you had one on a low block as well. The two centre-backs are absolutely fine. We leave them. We don't need to change them. And then that will bring us on to the full-backs. So we're doing something a little bit different here. And this is something I've trialled in uh, a recent video as well. My uh, Unai Emery Villarreal tactics on Patreon. And we trialled it for this tactic as well. What we have in a Mourinho system, another principle of his, as he likes to call them, a principle of play, is he likes one full-back to go forward and the other one to stay back. And they help form a back three. And that's what partly gives him protection and security now in this narrow diamond because they're the only players on the wing you don't want one of them to constantly stay back because what we have to do here because we struggle to try and get that variation between them usually what we do is we get one player going forward constantly and then one player to stay back well obviously with them being on the wing and the only players creating that width you need them both to vary. So what we're trialling here is actually having them both on balance in the hope that sometimes one will go forward and the other one will stay back and vice versa, depending on the side that you're playing on. But make sure that the run type is on overlappers naturally. That's what they're going to do in order to create that width. Midfield then, let's start off with the defensive midfielder. His defensive behaviour is actually on man mark. Now, please do bear in mind, I'm using my custom sliders in the gameplay that you're seeing above me so do go and check them out the marking is a little bit better a little bit tighter it is improved so as a result you find it slightly slightly more effective but again it's trying to recreate the tactic as best as we can having him on my mark um you know that's the way to do Mourinho when he's got so many players in midfield in this case you've got four central midfielders they do have that numerical advantage so as a result they can man up they can go man to man um, and sort of follow those guys around. This in particular would be used to track any number 10s, any opposition counter-attacking midfielders. So, um, you know, we have that on man mark. Attack and support, stay back while attacking because he's that anchor man, that screen, that protection for the back four. And then defensive position is on cover centre as you don't want him being dragged out wide. That is the job of the central midfielders ahead of him and also the fullbacks on either side. Positioning freedom is also stick to position. So with the central midfielders then, both of these guys are actually on the uh, same instructions. They're on balanced attack, not get forward because that will then make them running behind the striker. That's not what you want, but also you don't want them to stay back while attacking because they would still support the attacking moves. You don't want to leave the front three too isolated. In particular, they would be looking to support whenever the fullbacks overlapped as well. And the way we've 
have that recreated is on positioning freedom we have them drift wide so they're going to help create a little bit of width as well in order to support the the fullbacks who might be overlapping their support on crosses is stay on the edge of the box as we spoke about in the tactics only three men really getting into the box on the whole and a defensive position is cover wing as we mentioned these guys will be the one coming out to support um, and man those wing areas and like I say it is the same for the other central midfielder as well also bear in mind it's a right and left central midfielder not just base central midfielders with the cam this would have obviously been the deco role in this case his defensive support is on comeback on defense to make sure that he's tracking back and in support on crosses is get into the box for the cross so obviously he's with the two strikers in that regard finally his positioning freedom is stick to position as we try and get him in the hole get balls into him and then he's the one who in the advanced areas is going to be making things happen, springing attacks, looking to feed both of the strikers in in that regard um, so he can man those central areas. Right then, with the two forwards, as I slightly alluded to earlier, there's one who is more of a target man and then one who is more of that mobile striker um, and will look to sort of drift wide, chase loose balls and through balls, etc. Move into the channels, create a little bit of whip. So starting off with the target man, doesn't matter which way around you have these. I personally just went for this. Doesn't really matter. Um, we have him on stay central as he will be the focal point of that attack. And also you can play those long balls into him as well. And naturally with attacking runs, he's on target man. And this is going to help him to, to back into the opponent, get people in and around him, the striker, the attacking midfielder, um, you know, and they can play off him as well. And then defensive support is stay forward as he looks to be that out ball. You can get the ball up to him quickly and he can hold it up to then have the runners get in and around him. With the other striker, what we have as the more mobile one, we have him one on drift wide. As he looks to, again, as I say, run into the channels, exploit that space left in the wide areas. And also on getting behind as well, as he looks to, you know, be mobile, look to penetrate the bat line. That's how you're going to get, um, you know, players getting into those goal scoring one on one situations. And finally, his defensive support is come back on defence. So I mentioned that we also have a defensive game plan. Um, so let's talk about this. Well, obviously the formation stays the same, but this time with the tactics, the principles that we've got is basically this is trying to see the game out, just not allowing the opposition anything at all, hold on to that victory. So the defensive style this time is drop back. Everyone going to be pulling back this time. And whilst the width stays is the same, this time the depth is dropped from 40 to 20, giving you a real low block. Very, very passive, of course, um, but hopefully quite solid and, and limits the opposition playing in, in behind you as well. The width goes down to 60 this time as we try and make the team more compact. Don't stretch them out as much. Don't be as risk-taking and as aggressive in play. And then players in the box goes down to four this time, meaning that you only have two players in the box, which will be the strikers. Finally, the set pieces this time, corners and free kicks, go down to three and three. So how is this replicated in the player instructions? Well, there are a couple of changes. One with the attacking midfielder. This time, his support on crosses, rather than get into the box or cross, is now on stay on the edge of the box for the cross. And also with one of the central midfielders, doesn't matter which one, uh, rather than have balance attack, this time you have stay back while attacking to make sure that they are going to act as basically not only a second pivot, but also a, a second screen and a second defensive outlet. We also have an attacking game plan as well. So let me talk to you through this, trying adapting a little bit if they needed to press for a goal and seize the initiative. Not going too gung-ho, of course, because it is Jose, but there are elements that they would change. One of which is a defensive style now to press after possession loss. They become a bit more counter-pressing, trying to work a bit harder, um, you know, and just pressing the opposition as soon as they lose the ball in order to try and regain it. The width goes up a little bit to 28 this time as they become a little bit more risky, a little bit more aggressive in the way they play leaving a bit more space in order to complement that press and the depth also goes up to 60 still a mid block but a bit higher than what it was um, at 40 and 20. Uh, with the players in the box this goes up to eight meaning that you now have four players in the box which we'll talk talk about very shortly in the player instructions as well and then finally with the set pieces we move both of these up to five again a situation where you're really trying to press for that winner um, or just get an equaliser a goal basically in the late stages of the game. 
Finally then, the central midfielder who we change to more defensive. This time he becomes more attacking. We have him on get forward with attack and support. And also he uh, goes on getting to the box for the crosses. Um, in the support and crosses role as well right so that just about rounds it off for this tactic then guys if you've got any questions about the system do let me know in the comments down below and i will do my best to get back to you really appreciate everyone getting at me make sure to check out my patreon the link is down below to get access to all of those fantastic perks that i did speak about before check out any of my other series on the channel bruce your dortmund career mode series a realistic one um, suitable signing series where i show you the best players to sign for uh, different positions and different tactics etc and also uh, my realistic tactic series as well Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and want to see more. And check out the link in the description to my Twitter where you can give me a follow on there as well. On that note, we are going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I will see you soon.